I'm about a third of the way through the French polishing process at this point. So I start each session with alcohol only on the pad. And this is a way of uh, really polishing the, the previously applied finish. And um, I used a fair amount of pressure, even though it may not look like it in the video. Uh, but it's actually enough pressure to, to make my hand tired. Uh, after, at the end of the session, sometimes I, I actually have cramps in my hand from holding the pad and pushing down on the surface. The key thing is not to stop the pad at any point because if you stop it, you'll have a burn mark there, which you can, um, you know, fix with further application. But at some point, you get to the end of the process, and you don't want to have any burn marks at the end. So uh, just keeping it continuously moving is the key. It's important um, to get the edges uh, on the binding. Um, you really want to to build up this finish there because especially the places where it comes in contact to the body with the body during playing it's easy for the French polish to get rubbed off so it's good to get as much finish on there as you can possibly get um, and this, in this case we're polishing the finish but the same principle applies after doing the whole surface with um, strictly the alcohol mixture to polish it then the next step is uh, basically doing the same thing but this time in addition to alcohol we'll have the shellac and at this stage in the process uh, I'm using about equal amounts of shellac and alcohol earlier I would have had more shellac and later I'll have more alcohol and then in addition to the alcohol and the shellac also use um, a couple of drops of oil I use walnut oil um, some people use olive oil, uh, either one works well. Um, I like to let the oil absorb into the pad because you don't want to want the pad to be wet for the finish. It takes a few seconds uh, for it to disappear and may seem like it's not going to but all of a sudden it will just disappear into the pad and um, then you're ready to go. I uh, always knock the pad on on my arm or some surface um, before I start just to make sure that it's that it's not wet and then uh, it's uh, pretty much the same deal um, keeping a continuous movement uh, don't let the pad stop cover the whole top evenly as much as possible uh, fair amount of pressure the pressure increases as the finish flows out of the pad uh, there's a reservoir kept in the center uh, that wadded up piece of um, of cheesecloth in the middle and so you have to press harder as the finish is used up uh, to get it to flow out of the cloth and again it's important um, maybe even more important when you're actually depositing finish to get the edges uh, get the binding and make sure that you get plenty of finish onto the binding this is actually one of the favorite or maybe the favorite uh, part of building for me I uh, find this process very relaxing. I usually do it to music, um, even though it can be tiring by the time you've done all the parts of the guitar. Uh, I really like the way the, the wood changes as you put the finish on, and there's a lot of feedback that you actually get about the, um, especially on the top, but also to some extent on the back, about how the guitar flexes under pressure. Um, the back is done essentially the same as the top. Um, it's a little easier in some ways because it's an uninterrupted expanse. You don't have the sound hole or the fingerboard to, to stop the pad or to worry about avoiding. About every other session I'll do um, a pattern that goes across the grain instead of with the grain. That way kind of make sure you don't end up with some with a, a longitudinal pattern of some sort. Uh, but as I get close to the end, the last sessions, I stick to this longitudinal type of pattern uh, because the streaks seem to be, you know, any streaks that you end up with are less visible if they're in line with the grain. Um, it's a good thing that I enjoy doing this because it takes uh, about, I don't know, 15 or 20 of these sessions 
uh, all told by the time completely finished. And each one takes about an hour for the entire guitar. The sides are done essentially in the same manner as the rest of the guitar. I had a lot of trouble with this until I figured out a good way to, to hold the guitar. Um, I got a, a clamp from Lowe's that rotates around several axes and um, with that I can hold the guitar so that I can do each side. In fact, I can do all the parts of the guitar except the neck um, with, uh, without having to, to reclamp the guitar. Um, although in this video I did the top just when, you know, with the guitar resting on its back. But uh, this helps quite a bit and um, it allows me to, to do an entire session to do each um, surface of the guitar without waiting for something to dry. Here's what it looks like switching over from one side to the other. It's just a matter of uh, loosening the clamp on the vise and uh, flipping it over and tightening it back up and we're good to go. So if, uh, you know, each session takes about an hour altogether and, uh, you know, 20 sessions or something, 15 to 20 for the whole guitar, it's, it's a fair amount of time, but uh, compared to the overall time in the guitar, it's not that much. Uh, the neck is the uh, same kind of deal. Um, at this point, it's been about 40 minutes since I did the top, and so uh, the top is dry enough that I can rest the guitar on the top and do the neck. And the neck has a little less room for a, a nice long stroke, so I tend to use shorter strokes. The neck always seems to be more forgiving for some reason. I don't know if it's uh, the mahogany or just the fact that it's a curved surface. It doesn't present a, a continuous flat piece where any imperfection is, is visible. Um, and there you have it. Uh, that's, that's the process I use, and um, I'm slowly getting the hang.